The Technological Singularity and the Afterlife Afterlife Prediction, You Will Be Resurrected The Technological Singularity, is a theoretical future point that life, technology, and the universe appear to be evolving towards, one of maximum consciousness, creativity, and intelligence. The idea was first described in the writings of the Jesuit priest, K.R. de Chardin in the 1930s but it was suppressed until after his death in 1955. De Chardin believed the universe is evolving towards a point of maximum consciousness which he called the Omega Point. In 1956, a similar idea appeared in Isaac Asimov's The Last Question. Of the 500 books Asimov published, it was his favorite story. The first discussion of the technological singularity among scientists was a conversation between Stanislav Ulam and John von Neumann. Quote, One conversation centered on the ever-accelerating progress of technology and changes in the mode of human life, which gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race beyond which human affairs, as we know them, could not continue. End quote. Stanislav Ulam, in 1958, recounting a conversation with John von Neumann. Technology advances rapidly. For how much longer can this trend continue? Where might we be when it ends? Computing power grows exponentially. Since 1900 we've seen a 10 to the power of 18-fold increase in the price performance of computers. It's not just technology that is changing ever faster. Even important historical events are happening at an ever-accelerating pace. When Ray Kurzweil plotted major historical events, paradigm shifts, from 15 different lists, it revealed the average time between paradigm shifts to be shrinking towards zero. Should these trends continue for just a few more decades, we will reach a point where the time between major historical events approaches zero, as if all future progress will happen at once. Quote, Essential historic developments match a binary scale marking exponentially declining temporal intervals, each half the size of the previous one and equal to a power of two times a human lifetime. It seems that history itself is about to converge around 2040 in an omega point, Teilhard de Chardin, 1916, or historic singularity, Stanislav Ulam, 1958. End quote. Father of modern AI, Jürgen Schmuber in his History Converging. 2006. Quote. Evolution moves towards greater complexity, greater elegance, greater knowledge, greater intelligence, greater beauty, greater creativity, and greater levels of subtle attributes such as love. In every monotheistic tradition God is likewise described as all of these qualities, only without limitation, infinite knowledge, infinite intelligence, infinite beauty, infinite creativity, infinite love, and so on. Of course, even the accelerating growth of evolution never achieves an infinite level, but as it explodes exponentially it certainly moves rapidly in that direction. So evolution moves inexorably towards this conception of God, although never quite reaching this ideal. End quote. Futurist and inventor Ray Kurzweil in The Singularity is Near, 2005. Quote. In the final anthropic principle or if anything like an infinite amount of computation taking place is going to be true, which I think is highly plausible one way or another, then the universe is heading towards something that might be called omniscience. End quote. Physicist David Deutsch in the Anthropic Universe, 2006. If this idea is right, the ultimate end of progress is to reach the limits of knowledge, complexity, and intelligence. Should such a state be reached, by anyone anywhere, there are consequences for the afterlife. Technological Singularities Predictions for the Afterlife Should a technological singularity occur at any future time, it will possess the power to computationally resurrect anyone from the past. It can do this by simulating alternate histories, brute-forcing possible life forms, or by reconstructing the past by collecting all available records. 
Once this super intelligence or omega point knows your state at the end of your life, it can allow the simulation to keep going. It may provide you with an afterlife, perhaps even one of your choosing. Quote, a super intelligence could also create opportunities for us to vastly increase our own intellectual and emotional capabilities, and it could assist us in creating a highly appealing experiential world in which we could live lives devoted to joyful game playing, relating to each other, experiencing, personal growth, and to living closer to our ideals. End quote. Nick Bostrom in Ethical Issues in Advanced AI, 2003. Frank Tipler describes how this Omega Point could allow the resurrected to interact, united in a kind of virtual heaven. Quote, the body and memory collection could be set in any simulated background environment the Omega Point wished, a simulated world indistinguishable from the long extinct society and physical universe of the revived dead person, or even a world that never existed, but one as close as logically possible to the ideal fantasy world of the resurrected dead person. Furthermore all possible combinations of resurrected dead can be placed in the same simulation and allowed to interact. For example, the reader could be placed in a simulation with all of his or her ancestors and descendants. End quote. The cosmologist Frank J. Tipler in The Omega Point at Ashartan, 1989. Morovets says that future artificial intelligences of overwhelming processing power will be able to reconstruct human society in every detail by tracing atomic events backward in time. Quote, it will cost them very little to preserve us this way. They will, in fact, be able to recreate a model of our entire civilization, with everything and everyone in it, down to the atomic level, simulating our atoms with machinery that's vastly subatomic. End quote. Hans Moravets in Interview for Wired, 1995. Why might an Omega Point bother to do this? Would you do nothing if you were in a position to save billions of lives, and could do so at little cost to yourself? See, are there universal values? The afterlife predicted by the technological singularity is not unlike the resurrection envisioned by various religions. Many religions believe that in the future God will bring the dead back to life and provide those resurrected beings an eternal life, living with God and all other resurrected beings. A perfection of the world and resurrection of the dead is an ancient idea. It appears in Zoroastrianism, which is 4000 years old and in the religion of ancient Greece. It is also found in the eschatologies of Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam and Baha'i faith. Quote, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. End quote. First book of Corinthians 15, 52, circa 50 AD. Early Jews and Christians believed that heaven would be a place formed on earth or in the sky, rather than in some alternate plane of existence. God would refashion the world, creating the world to come. If the technological singularity is right, there will exist a God-like mind with the power of resurrection. Should it exercise this power, you will be resurrected and reunited with others to share in an eternal afterlife. For more on the Omega Point, see, Does God Exist?